anywhere you want along the rails. Anywhere you want. I'm going to start when the last person comes into the door. Wow, this is cool. Well, you should do that. Come on in. Pick a spot against the rails. Take some pictures now. And I'm going to start when the last person comes in the door. We are currently on the right side of that power plant, the Nevada Wing. To our immediate left is the Arizona, Colorado River, and then to the left of that is the Arizona Wing. So there are 17 commercial generators down here. There are nine in Arizona, and there are eight here in Nevada. But if you're counting the generator lights or the generator numbers, you're only gonna see seven. And that's because generator number three has been dismantled for repair and maintenance. And you see the major components of that generator over the rails, down below, in front of you on the floor. You'll see the rotor, the, the uh, shaft, you'll see the laminates or the plates that they're removing and working on. But the, the rest of the generators standing in front of you are all 70 feet tall. But you can only see the top 30 feet of them. From that exciter cap or that light on top to the floor is 30 feet. There's another 40 feet of generator below the floor. If there is a light on, on top of a generator, that indicates that generator is currently online and is producing power right now. And just by looking straight down the road, the first one online is Nevada 1 and 1. Then you got Nevada 5 and Nevada 8 are online as well. When they're online, they produce 130 megawatts of power each. When combined, all 17 generators produce upwards of 2,080 megawatts of power. That's instantly enough electricity for about 2 million homes. 56% of the electricity we generate here on an annual basis goes to Southern California. That's our biggest customer. And then the rest is almost equally divided between Southern Nevada and Arizona. Now the next generator I want to point out is a little bit smaller, but it's on the floor. So if you look directly over the rails down below, you're gonna see the rotor that they're working on. But between the rotor and the number one generator, you're gonna see the silver metal railing on the floor. That, inside that silver metal railing is that rust-colored piece of equipment. That is a Pelton water wheel generator. It produces 2.4 megawatts of what we call in-house power. So that's the generator that produces all the electricity for the Hoover Dam, the power plant, visitor center, cafe, gift shop, everything Hoover Dam related. That is our internal power source. And we have two of them. We have this one here, and we have its twin sister in Arizona, because as you can imagine, they have to be running 24 seven. So by having two, we can run one and maintain or rest the other. But this particular Pelton water wheel down below was the very first generator ever to be put in operation in all of Hoover Dam, and that was back on September 11, 1936. Now the next thing I want to bring your attention to is a little bit higher on our field of vision. If you look towards the ceiling a little bit, you're going to see the first of two original P&H bridge cranes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I say first of two because the first one here has the American flag on it, and its brother is parked all the way down there at the far end of the bar bag above the last generator. So these bridge cranes span the width of the room, and they both ride on tracks that run the entire length of this bar plan. Each of these bridge cranes can lift 300 tons. To give you an idea how much lifting capability that is, think of the Statue of Liberty in New York City Harbor. She weighs 225 tons. So that means just one of these bridge cranes alone can easily lift her off the ground. But why do we have two of them? Well, the answer lies again on that rotor over the rails down below the floor. These rotors can weigh upwards of 580 tons. So we need actually both these bridge cranes to come together to form what we call the super crane so they can lift that one down below and the other rotor in a kind of these generators that are going to go there. Now the last thing I want to present to you guys here is actually behind everybody on the rails. If you follow my car on this big wall right here, you are staring at the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam stands 726 feet tall. The press lane at the top is 1,244 feet long. Just shy of four miles spanning Nevada and Arizona. The top of the dam is 45 feet thick, and that's the road. But just as equally as impressive is the thickness of the base of the dam below us. The base of Hoover Dam is 660 feet thick. To give you an idea of how much concrete that is, take a look at this wall right here, and then turn your heads completely around, and you've got a power wall of passive generators down there. That is a distance of 650 feet. So you still have to add another 10 more feet to the length of this room, 
fill this room with concrete from top to bottom, and that will equal the thickness of the base of Hoover Dam below. Ladies and gentlemen, Hoover Dam is 6.6 .6 million tons of solid concrete, and it's currently holding back the largest man-made reservoir in the United States, and that's later in that direction. Okay, so that concludes this presentation. Start gathering your families together, finish the last of your selfies, and then wait for me at the door. I'll be the first one out to lead you guys back to elevators. Thank you.